Welcome to the Personal Development Mastery Podcast. Stand out, don't fit in. Today I am delighted to speak with a truly inspiring person, Will Polston. Will, uh, you are a mindset strategist, a neurolinguistic programming master practitioner, a member of the International Coaching Federation and a certified master coach. You have spoken at TEDx and also are a blogger for the Huffington Post. Your mission is to empower 1 billion people in your lifetime to unlock their full potential and transform their excuses into results to benefit themselves, their family, their friends, their community, society, humanity, and the universe, what you call the ripple effect. On a personal level, I am privileged to say that you have inspired me on multiple levels and you have given me tools that changed my life over the three plus years that I've known you. And I'm fortunate to consider you a friend. Will Bolston, I'm thrilled to be speaking with you. Welcome to Personal Development Mastery Podcast. Aggie, thank you so much. I'm, I'm really privileged to, to be able to be on the show and uh, really looking forward to the conversation. Thank you so much. So am I. Well, uh, I know you have a, a, an intriguing story and I always start with uh, some background for my guests on the podcast. And uh, because I've been to many of your events, I have heard many aspects of your story. So I want today to ask you, if I, if I could, if I'd ask you, what is the single biggest uh, milestone in your personal development journey so far this single one which one would you say it is God, what a great question to start with um in in terms of what what it is that i've achieved or accomplished in in my personal development journey is that is that what you mean just to be really clear what do you consider a milestone something that really uh change things or yeah i mean i i i always for me i i still always refer to i I refer to it as my lightning moment my major lightning moment Mm -hmm. which was 2013 may 2013 and i I cried my eyes out for about 15 minutes because in that moment i realized it was sort of a complete paradigm shift and i realized that my belief that money equaled happiness wasn't what it was really about there was something much deeper than that and that was the real catalyst. And in that moment, it was it, for me. It was like if, if it was a movie, the, the sort of the the clouds would part, the sun would come beaming down, everything made sense, and there was like a a sense of like overwhelming energy, but peace and just everything. Sort of all the dots connecting at the same time. Um, so yeah, that that's prob- that 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 is the the one that I, I always come back to. I mean, that was that was the moment. I mean, I, I like to find out about moments with people. What's the moment that you made a decision to change? What's the moment that? You- and, and that for me was the moment that 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 life life uh, took a, a very different trajectory, and I started thinking very differently from that moment. And that's what the, that uh, that was in uh, Tony Robbins' event. In yeah, UPW. UPW. Yeah. Okay. The first thing I wanted to discuss with you is the broad term of success. So when you think of the word successful, who is the first person that comes to your mind? Um, I I must admit, I I still think of my Uncle Mark a lot. He's probably one of the first. Um, I also think of Tony Robbins, I mean, as, as, as a massive influence for me. Um, particularly from that moment seven years ago that I mentioned. Um, so what, yeah, what makes them stand out as successful to you? Um, so I, I think my my uncle Mark um, is because he was like just a normal guy from Essex um, and went on to become immensely successful financially mm-hmm. um, in terms of the impact that he's had. I mean, pretty much every household in the world will be aware of, um, uh, of, of of things that he's had a direct impact with um, and and the impact of that. Um, and, and also that he was a, um, 
what I call like a true creator, you know, like he is a, he is the definition of creator. He, he pioneered reality TV. Um, and yeah, he, he, he created something that didn't exist, you know, like something that didn't exist. It wasn't just, he, he enhanced something that was already there, which you could argue he probably did to a degree, but, um, yeah, he, uh, that, that for me is, 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 is it, it wasn't, that they're fina- he's just financially successful because he's got lots of family money and all that stuff. Is he's, he's, he truly like the the true definition of an entrepreneur? You know, is identifying a, a, an opportunity and, and moving on that and solving a problem. Um, so yeah, him and then Tony, I suppose because well, I deem about Tony is 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 the the level of um, fulfillment or certainly my perception of fulfillment that he has, and again the impact. You know, is that the the impact. Um, in years gone by, I always was focused on, on, on me, like, what can I do? What status can I get? Blah, 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 blah. Whereas now it's more about the impacts and on, on, on more than, well, many occasions. I mean, almost probably once a week. I mean, even as, as you were just doing the introduction, sort of, a, I've had the play. I, I remember the very first moment that I ever met you. It sounds like a date, doesn't it? The very first moment we met. Uh, but I, I do. I, re- I remember the, the very first moment that, that we met in person at, at the, the cricket grounds when I was speaking at the Essex for Life event. And um, I, I remember it very, very clearly. And you saying what you were saying. Um, and when I stop and reflect, because I say it a lot, you know, when I get in, I introduce myself as this is who I am. But when I'm sitting here and I'm hearing it, it's like, oh, yeah, I guess guess that I am doing those things and uh, that is happening and sometimes um, I think all of us we, we can be so focused on what our goals are and our desires is that we st- we don't stop to reflect and that's something that I must admit I think I'm pretty good at is, is seeing how far I've come I'm, but there's always more opportunity to mm-hmm. stop and reflect and see how far you've come um, because if you're ambitious and if you're driven, we don't tend to look in the review mirror. You know, we are focused on, 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 on what's in front of us. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that's, that, that's definitely something. Yeah. And just to finish with the success, you mentioned your, your uncle Mark and Tony Robbins. So on a personal level for you, Will Polston, what does success mean? So for, for me, um, it's it's about doing, it sort of comes into the ripple effect, doing something that benefits me, that I enjoy, that's good for others and is good for the greater good. You know, that for me, um, as, as you know, I'm not going to talk about the, the four uh, classes of experience and that's sort of a class one experience. And um, that that for me is is success. If I'm doing something that I enjoy, it's beneficial to me, it's benefit the greater good, benefit for others and, and enables um, and 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 living congruently right mm-hmm. Live, living congruently being able to do what i want um to do um that that for me is a definition of success because i know lots of people that again are financially successful and 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 have lots of, of of they have the family and they have this but they're still not doing what they love every day like i love doing what i love every day you know i i i'm really fortunate that that i've designed and it is a design it hasn't happened by accident I've, I've created a life now where 90% of the time I'm doing stuff that I absolutely love and I'm mm-hmm. looking to improve that more and more. You know, like I was saying to someone only yesterday, like most of, um, most of my day, it, it, it doesn't, like I think there's a, a famous saying sort of when you love what you do, you'll never work another day in your life or something like that. Yes. And, and I, I think that's the case for me. You know, I get to, I, I, I get paid for talking about stuff that I love Um for creating those light bulb moments for people mm-hmm. which go on and change their life. Mm-hmm. Um, and I get to hang out with cool people like yourself for a living. <laughs> you know, I, 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 get, I get to have the privilege of being interviewed or interviewing people and, and connecting with people. I love connecting with positive driven, like-minded people. And yeah, I, I get to do it for a living. And that, that for me is, is what I love now. That's what I love. And I'm really, really, as, as you know, very, um, focused on getting people to do what they want to do don't copy someone else just Mm -hmm. just because that's their way of doing things it's like what's your north star what's your north star trajectory what are your values and you live to that um and and that for me is is success um which is interesting so as i say that because that there are still certain milestones 
that I've not achieved yet. Yeah, it's interesting because as I was just saying that, I was like, well, what what else would 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 I would I want? Yeah, so there there are certain other milestones I think that are important for me. So be okay. So another, I'm gonna I've never sort of delved into the depth of this in the way that I am. I think being empowered in all key areas of life is mm-hmm. success mm-hmm. actually. Mm-hmm. So it's not just saying having great because I've I've gone I've actually swung the pendulum from thinking money equals happiness to thinking money doesn't matter to realizing actually money really does matter and and finding that balance so um so that but but then being empowered in all all key areas of life so health fitness relationships social life mm-hmm. sort of mentally emotionally sort of empowered um so yeah being empowered in all of those areas for sure that's great a great answer and i understand that uh, the making an impact to others living congruently and uh, being empowered in all areas is uh yeah because <laughs> it's, it's 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 you know it's a, it's a really good question i'm so glad you've asked this because i've never really reflected on it but because i was just thinking well if i'm making an impact and i feel good and and other people are benefiting would i feel is is that success for me and i was like well no not if the other areas aren't empowered you know it, it is that that it's cliche but it is about that balance so yeah all so success for me is all areas of life being empowered or feeling empowered in all areas of life so yeah that's fantastic and uh you mentioned some elements about the the north star or the values and actually let me ask that next uh, because it's something that in your uh, event unlock your potential you discuss extensively about the vision or the north star as you call it or the the outcome that we want on a far uh, the the furthest point that draws uh, draw us uh, towards that so tell us what's it what is its importance and how can someone go about to find that north star that guides their uh, per, their goals in life their smaller goals so I, for as long as I can remember, have been obsessed with goals. You know, even when I was 12, 13 years old, I had goals. But at the time, it was very materialistic things. So it was mm-hmm. like I wanted to I wanted to get a job. So I wanted to get a paper round or I wanted to buy that item of clothing or I wanted to buy that toy. And when I say toy, I mean, like, as a teenager, it was like mini motorbikes and petrol scooters and stuff like that. Um, and I've always been obsessed with it. So I, I've, I've, I've been sort of actively practicing goal setting for nearly 20 years I reckon but um it was all very short-term goals and and in my opinion there's there's sort of three types of people there's the people that don't set goals so the people that drift through life and they're just kind of on the the river of life I mean I think Tony Robbins he, he, well he talks about Niagara syndrome people that are just sort of floating on the river of life and then they get to a fork in the river and whatnot but um so there's those people that don't really set goals and they just drift through mm-hmm. life. Then there's the people that set goals, but they set lots of short-term goals. So whether it's one year or three year or materialistic goals. And the downside to that is every time they set a goal, the worst thing that happens is they achieve it. because so they go, great, I feel good for five minutes. Let's set another goal. And then they end up on the hamster wheel of life of just achieving goals, setting goals, achieving goals, setting goals. And then they find themselves after a while, they, they become really deflated because they feel unfulfilled in, in what they're doing. Um, so, yeah, so there's that. And then there's the the, the 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 sort of the masters, if you like, in terms of the people that, in my opinion, are, are able to. And I call them masters because they're not living in the fear of, or they're not living in sort of the the constant illusion of 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 uh, of, of of gain and loss, or, or or fear and pleasure, you know. And um, they're, they're they're sort of they're they're more aligned to sort of their higher power, if you like, without sort of going down that whole rabbit hole right now but um and, and for me that's that's what it's about so for me an ultimate goal is is uh, sorry a north star is an ultimate goal in life personally fishing financially what does that look like and the, the there's a few reasons why i think it's so important one of the reasons is because if you've got something you're constantly striving towards every day that's so big 
that you're never going to achieve it in your lifetime. I, I often refer to have a North Star in life that's equivalent to trying to empty the sea with a spoon. It's just so big you're never going to achieve it or certainly not achieve it in your lifetime or maybe even within your generation. Um, is that you, you you can have something you're constantly moving towards. There is an importance though, and I have to stipulate this because this is where people, they go, well, if, if I've got this goal that I never achieve, I'm going to feel unfulfilled. But that's because people quite often attach their feeling of fulfillment to achieving the outcome mm-hmm. rather than the, their, their feeling of achievement on the pro- process of or the progress of the process. And that's the switch that you need to make. So it's like, yeah, that, that, that's an important switch that needs to happen. So then every day, if you know that you've, 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 you like today, I'm doing this podcast with you that whenever this gets released in a couple of weeks or whatever, um, that's then going to go out and it's going to hopefully impact some people, you know? So I know that today I've done something that's moved forward. I've got coaching calls to do today and various other bits and bobs, but it's, it's, it's constantly every day. I'm, I've, I've, we've, we've created more. We're having more of an impact in whichever way we can. So, so that's that. Um, and yeah, the, the, the beauty of it is just kind of knowing that like by the, by the time that, uh, Brendan Bouchard has th- three questions he asks himself. Um, did I live? Did I love? Did I matter? You know? And for me, it's like, what great questions. You know, did, did I live? Like, have, have I enjoyed myself? Have I, have I done the things that I want to do? Did I love? Was I loving? And not just in an intimate relationship way, but like loving to people, kind, caring, whatever. And then did I matter? Like, what was the difference that I made? We, we, we all have an experience let's call it in these human bodies for a period of time that none of us know how long is going to be mm-hmm. like make the most of it. if i if i died today can i say that i've given like have i poured everything that i wanted to do and have i done everything i wanted to do and move forward the the answer is yes i've certainly attempted it i've not maybe achieved the outcomes that i would like to achieve yet um in terms of the milestones but I've, I'm certainly been on on that journey, but the other thing as well, and I'm I'm, I'm quite funny with languages, you know, picking up on certain language, and I know that one of the things that you for a long time were, were looking for was how do I find my purpose? And I think mm-hmm. so many people they get caught up with how do I find my purpose? How do I find my north star? I don't believe you find it. I believe you create it. You know, so for me, a purpose is the why you do what you do. And the mission, the vision, the North Star is what you do. You mm-hmm. know, it's it's it, it, there's a slight difference. Some people sort of wrap them up into the same. Um, but if you look at all of the, the the great philosophers over the years, they've they've talked about some equivalent. You know, um, Napoleon Hill spoke about having a chief aim. The Greeks spoke about having a telos. Um, uh, there's all different words, but people talk about that. You know, the, a lot of people in business, you know, they they well, what does the end game look like? Are we mm-hmm. selling this business? Are we like, what, what, what's the, what's the plan? Are we floating it? And all, all this stuff. And I, and I think there's, there's so much that people do in business, particularly business owners. And I imagine a lot of entrepreneurs will be listening to this is that we, 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 we create these strategies for our businesses, but we don't create them for our lives. I, I, it, it shocks me. And it's and, and I'm sure many people listening to this will probably do it, is that they spend more time working on their daily to-do lists mm-hmm. in terms of structuring those to-do lists than they do on their life lists in terms of what they want their life to look like. You know, most people, if you said to them, have you ever set a to-do list? They go, yeah, of course I have. I used to, used to, I have loads of lists, you know, I have my to-do yeah. lists all the time. They go, okay, cool. Have you set your life goals? Oh, no, I haven't done that. I'm like, well, that's crazy, you know. But like, how important is it to you to have to make the most of that day with a to-do list, but you've not made the most of your life because you haven't structured it in that same way um, or, or at least sort of given some consideration to it in that way. Uh, what you said about uh, purpose, you mentioned purpose, and there is a, a phrase that for me sums it up very nicely about uh, the purpose. Uh, it's that... The purpose is not our or our purpose is not standing there like a rock that waiting for us to discover it. Instead, it is like a song or a poem which we compose, we create as we go along. So it's never we're never going to find it in literally find it because it's that's how I see it anyway, and uh, that's. Uh, 
my perception of the and I think I agrees with what you said the difference between the purpose and the the mission which is the the end goal tell me in terms of defining that no star how do you do you go about defining just intellectually so you really think what is it that I would like to do and you write it down or do you uh, employ other elements of yourself like emotionally or spiritually in order to define that north star um so I, the the process that i go through with people is a very intellectual way you know um so i i have a few ways of of getting people to 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 get clarity on it and and it, it's something that's constantly evolving right mm-hmm. so it's constantly evolving it's constantly being tweaked it's constantly being updated there's a few different ways that i suggest so one of the things that i say to people is what would like if 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 money wasn't a consideration and you could do whatever you wanted what would you want to do like what would be the absolute dream you know your ideal day just write it out what would the absolute dream be so that's a way of starting that process personally professionally financially what what would life look like as 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 the dream another way that i get people to do it um, or get clarity on it is by going through um, and creating or using the ikigai concept. So an ikigai, we don't have a, a direct translation for it, but it's a Japanese word, which means reason for being. Um, and if you can imagine a Venn diagram, um, it, it comp- is compiled of four different things. So what you love doing, um, what you're good at, what the world needs and what you can be paid for, basically. And then the sweet spot in the middle. So that that's a way of, of sort of helping create that and, and get a bit of an idea of that. Um, and then another way is I've got a set of questions that I go through with people um, the, the, that helps them get an idea of, of what that could be as, as well. So again, it's constantly being refined and tweaked and edited. Um, I truly believe the so if they, they do evolve from time to time uh, well they're constantly evolving they're tweaking but sometimes you have more dramatic like if you'd have asked me what my north star was at 18 years old versus my north star when i was 23 they're very very different and that's okay because it unfolds and things change and things develop um particularly if you've got a growth mindset you know if, if you're if you're improving yourself every day by one percent then a year down the line, that's that, that's that's a significant amount. The new realizations, the new awareness that you have, and so on and so forth, you, you can come from a very different perspective. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the process. But it is a motive, you know. I mean, my the and that's why I talk about getting clear on your purpose. Um, it was like, what what's the what's the real drive? So for me, a, a lot of people's purpose, so their why they do what they do, the the, the the, the why the purpose has the ability to enable you to access an un, un um, a renewable energy source like an untapped renewable energy source which mm-hmm. is human emotion you know and um, and our and this is why so that that's part of the process and the other part of the process is when I go through values right so I, I get people to identify their values in two different ways their means values which are things that they do and what I call their end values which are basically feelings um and you have towards values and away from values so towards values are things that you want pleasure if you like and then away from values are pain so by 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 using those different tools we get clarity on that and there's yeah there's no doubt about it my my why my purpose was born out of my perception or well my uh the pain i experienced in in my early teens um and because of that pain it's something that i value significantly now you know we've and, and i believe that we all have and for a lot of people it's a subconscious thing is that they want to um they, they'll have that somewhere you know, in their life. And sometimes it's not always below 18, sometimes it's a bit older than that, but there's there's something that people want to do and 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 that pain is 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 a significant driver. Um pain gets you going, pleasure keeps you going. And with regards to with with regards to that, it it, it 
when you when you identify it, yeah, you can tap into it. I mean, if if we strip business back, I got asked on an interview a couple of weeks ago, what's something you wish you knew when you were 15 years old and or a message you tell yourself when you're 15 years old. And what I wish I could tell myself was what the true purpose of business was. So I thought business was just a vehicle to make loads of money when I was growing up, right? Um, um, and have a, 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 a certain lifestyle. Whereas now I realize actually the purpose of business is to solve a problem, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so yeah, that, that's, that, that's kind, that's, that's the, the, what the mission is, yeah, go and make money and do whatever, but the purpose would be to, to solve a problem at some level. Um, and when, when, when I work and I have the pleasure of working with many purpose led entrepreneurs, when we tap into their why it's because of a pain that they've experienced or someone close to them has experienced mm-hmm. or, yeah, or or a, at the very least, a pain that they can empathize with. That means that they want to go on and do what they want to do. So, in 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 marketing terms, and I'm, I'm sure you know this, we, we talk about sort of an avatar and having an ideal client and whatever. There's so many people that I know that their avatar, their ideal client, is them. In yes, the, the year. Yeah, exactly. Right, mm-hmm. um, or someone very close to them in the past. And yeah. when, when they tap into that, they're like, right, yeah, I get it now. I get it. Um, and that's where they get this fuel source from. I know that this is my avatar because I, especially when you have gone through a, a journey of transformation and you realize that you could help others not to go through the same but to accelerate the journey, it makes sense to try and solve a problem that you've already solved rather than trying to devise a completely new solution for uh, the problem. Uh, Well, you mentioned uh, earlier on the values and I wanted to discuss values with you. So can you tell me a few questions really about the values? Where do they come from? What is their importance in our lives? And how can we change them if we realize that our values do not serve us cool so um let's start with question number one and i might have to, you might have to remind me of question number two so question number sure. one where, where do they come from so a, a value is basically a priority right so another word for value is a priority something you prioritize um and it's, it's interesting because there's lots of ologies right an ology effectively means study so you've got biology and physiology and sociology and um all, all the ologies and one of the ologies is axiology right which is the study of values and very few people study that but most everybody is driven by values businesses are driven by values people are driven by values um and every single person on the planet has a unique set of values what they prioritize and like i said i talk about two different types I talk about means values and invalues but i'll come to that um the a value is is created from a perceived void. So if you have a perception of something missing in your life or once was missing in your life, you will have a high value on that thing. So basically, the greater the perception of void, so again, it's important with the language I'm using, perception. It's your perception of void. You may not have actually been missing. It was mm-hmm. your perception of it missing. Then the, the more that you will value that specific thing. Mm-hmm. um so yeah that's 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 how they're created um okay and, and what happens is as, yeah. as so we have a values hierarchy um basically an order of our values all of our priorities and as we perceive to fill those voids then those higher those hierarchies can change there's another way of changing the hierarchy as well um a couple of different ways of changing them but yeah that's that's how they're made okay so yeah my other question was the the importance and in our life and how we can change them which you touched upon so they're they're, they're so important to the point where you're constantly living your values Mm -hmm. right and if you're not you'll be incongruent and you'll know you're not because you are in what i call the um the rift so stress overwhelm frustration depression anxiety unfulfillment all those negative emotions that people don't want. So yeah, that's um, that. That's that. Um, 
and then how to change them. So one of them is creating an awareness of what they are in the first place. Right. And just having an awareness and making a decision. Actually, no, I don't want that to be my 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 priority right now. Um now some people have been fixed in a, a way for a long time. So then we could do something called a benefit stack. So basically if we want to move another value up, then we start looking at the benefits to having that value higher in all of our areas of life. So um, in terms of means values, my my four highest means values are self mastery, um, building businesses, creating wealth, and building relationships. Mm-hmm. So that is what I spend most of my time doing. You know, mm-hmm. and it's evident throughout pretty much the most of the work that, that I do is that's what I'm doing, and and I I, I choose to structure my life like that. Um, but if I wanted to move, like I, I I changed creating wealth, I moved creating wealth up. Um, last year is that I do a benefit stack. So I find out what are all the benefits, primary, secondary, and tertiary benefits in all of the eight key areas of life to having creating wealth higher than whatever was above it. Mm -hmm. So for example, how would creating wealth benefit my social life? How would it benefit my attitude? How would it benefit my family? How would it benefit my, um, my, um, my business? How would it benefit my fitness and my health. Like I look at all of those areas and I find the primary benefit and then the secondary benefit, which is the benefit of the primary benefit and then the tertiary benefit, which is the benefit of the secondary benefit. So you're going deep into the benefit of that. And then it gets to a point you're like, Oh my God, yeah, this is a no brainer. I really need to do this. <laughs> um, so we're creating an emotional driver. A lot of people, their values will change when they go through what we call a significant emotional event. Yes, a divorce, losing a family member, losing a business, whatever it could be. And that is the pain. That is the perception of the void that sends them on a different trajectory. So like, no, I'm not living my life like this anymore. But you don't have to go through those pains. You can create the the opposite to pain is pleasure. So you can create, you can flip the scales, create enough pleasure of said uh, said value being higher. Mm-hmm. So that you move forward in that way. Okay. So you say that uh, your highest value is self-mastery. And uh, that uh, reminds me of that uh, quote by uh, Plato, who said that to conquer self uh, was, is the most, uh, the first and best victory. That's what he said. Uh, my question is, because you said that they come from perceived voids. So for you personally, having self-mastery as your top uh, means value, does that mean that you perceive you have a void of that? Um, I perceived other people not mastering themselves. Okay. And the pain of that right. was enough of a driver. Okay, so the, the value, even though it is your value, so you don't refer to your own self-mastery, is it? perceived lack of other people's yeah but, okay. but because of because of me observing what i see in other people uh-huh. i and and the impact that can have i don't want to have that impact does that make sense you know I, what I, I, want... I i never realized that that when we say uh, perceived lack we didn't necessarily. I, I always thought that it was for myself that I I perceive that I am lacking that particular element, because in my mind, my uh, higher values is the personal growth and learning, which are I have always been. I mean, since I was a kid, I was an avid reader, and I I never understood when I realized when I learned about this. Uh, terms about values and the perceived lack I couldn't realize where that was coming from for myself because I was always learning and growing but now it makes more sense seeing other people who really don't are not interested interested in growing or learning does does that uh, make sense what I'm saying yeah yeah so thanks for that that's a a nice uh, clarification. <laughs> That's cool. 
Let's talk about uh, your coaching then, something different. And you have those three pillars in your coaching, clarity, uh, action, and accountability. So in a nutshell, what's the importance of each of those three? Well, to take a back step, so it's all underpinned by congruence. And what I mean by congruence is that are your actions and intentions aligned? Because if they're not, you'll fall into what I call the rift, which is stress, overwhelm, frustration, depression, anxiety, unfulfillment. Um, so for me, I was like, right, well, what one of the things I've always been very good at is taking complicated stuff and making it simple, you know. Um, and it's fair to say that life mastery is a complicated subject, you know, like all, all of the different nuances and everything. You can most learn to yeah, exactly. Right. So I was like, right, how can I refine this into the simplest way that I know? And, and, and that was what it was for me. I was like, actually, yeah, there's three things you can do. You need to get clear. You need to take action, which is really just those two. But for me, I was like, well, why don't people take action? Like, what are the reasons that we don't take action? And I just boiled it down to two things. It was lack of clarity and lack of accountability. So it was like, right, yeah, accountability is key. Look at any peak performer. Sports was a great example of this. They have a coach. Any really successful businessman will surround themselves with people that are great that they can learn from, you know, whether it's people in their field or other high achievers, because it keeps them accountable. It enables them to keep raising their standards, you know? Um, and yeah, that's where the accountability piece comes in. Um, so mm -hmm. clarity is about, right, get clear on where you are, get clear on where you want to get to reverse engineer the process and start taking the steps. Um, I also include under that, so that's the practical part of it, but also included that is clarity of mind, right? So the perspective, of things like most of the work that I do isn't really actually about getting people into action like that's why I don't regard myself as a motivational speaker you know I don't like to motivate people there's a difference between motivation and inspiration motivation is when you're living someone else's values um that have either been injected or projected onto you and when you're living your values you're inspired you take the word inspired in spirit another word for spirit is energy you're in energy you have that energy so I love getting people to access that and have their own drive. I, I say to so many of my clients, like, I'm going to coach you to make myself redundant, you know, in, in the respect of that you're going to have the tools, but for as long as you want to continue to grow, then you're going to want that accountability. But if you get to a point where you're just quite happy to sort of get to a level and maintain that level and, and, and achieve, then, then you're going to have all the skills to do it. You're not going to need me to hold you accountable. But most people, as they keep raising their bar, raising their game, they, they raise the bar and then they have new challenges and then with new challenges comes a new way of thinking and, and and all of that so so yeah then the action piece is actually doing the work um and then accountability is, is accountability is holding people accountable because we, we've been conditioned in my opinion to be accountable you know when we're born we're accountable to our parents we go to school we're accountable to our teachers we go to work we're accountable to our bosses then we go into the big wide world to achieve something for ourselves and we wonder why stuff doesn't happen and it's because we're not we've not got that accountability and accountability is great because you, you you have that person to 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 hold your feet to the fire you know most of us are liars aggie you know in, and i don't mean liars in the respect of that we're bad people we lie to our friends and stuff but we lie to ourselves mm -hmm. so we go, oh, it's not that important i can do it next week or it's not that important i can do it next month no it is that important yes it is going to make a difference and no fully grown adult wants to have to go and tell another fully grown adult that they've not done what they said they were going to do you know, and, and, and I'm the same. I, I, I have a massive, massive amount of accountability um, to get stuff done because mm -hmm. I know it works from that. And, and I believe high performers, high achievers, they want accountability, you know, because it gives them nowhere to hide. Um, they want to know their results. They want to know how they're performing because then they can improve it. And um, I think that people, in my opinion, that say they don't want to be held accountable are scared of getting found out or they're scared of the success that they could achieve or they're fearful of the success they could achieve if they were held accountable. Mm. That said, a lot of people make an assumption, and this is important, a lot of people make an assumption that accountability is being told what to do. 
They're two very different things. I don't like being told what to do. I don't know about you, Aggie, but my, most people I've met that they, they don't really like being told what to do. So over um, uh, over a period of time, it's like it's, it's understanding that accountability is not like most of my clients. Very rarely do I give them tasks to do. Normally, it's they're telling me what to do. And I'm like, are you sure you want to do that? Yep. Are you 10 out of 10 commit to do that? Yep, I'm going to do it. Okay, fine. I'll hold you accountable. It's not me. It's, it, it's not people, yeah, being being constantly told what to do by by someone. And that's that, that, that's a key difference. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Coming back to clarity, one of those three, do you find that there are people that struggle to find clarity? And if so, why is that the case? Um, yeah, sure. Everybody does. Um, are there, are there people that I've not been able to get clarity with? Nope. Um, I, I can, we can get clarity. I, I, the, the process that I go through with people is it, it's a combination, it's a bit of a dance and it is a bit of an art as I suppose it is a science, but there's an art to it as well is that North star reverse engineer it, you know, 10 year, five year, three year, one year, 90 day, 30 day. That gives us a trajectory of what needs to, to be done. Mm-hmm. Um, then sometimes, we need to change our perspective. So Wayne Dyer once said, if you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change the way you think about it. So that's for me, like clarity comes under either or of those. So we're either changing something or we're changing the way we think about it, which is just, again, clarity. It's it's, it's creating a new awareness, um, gaining new insights. Um, but yeah, I, it, anyone can get clarity about anything. You've got to also remember, Aggie, is that, and anyone that's listening this, listen to this, is that any problem, any problem, is simply an unasked or unanswered question. Thank you for listening to this first half of the interview with Will Bolston. Tune in to the next episode, uh, number thirty-four, to listen to the rest of the interview where Will. Uh, speaks about goal setting, morning routines, NLP, and he gives some fascinating answers on my quick fire questions. Thank you very much for listening. Please take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review Personal Development Mastery on Apple Podcasts. If you want to know more about me and how I can help you, join my Facebook group, Personal Development Mastery. The link is in the show notes or you can simply type bit.ly slash pdm group. And until next time, stand out, don't fit in.